Hey everybody, thanks for sticking with us through this cold Canadian winter. We haven't been able to put out any schoolie videos because we've been waiting for the temperature to warm up so we can actually convert the rust, paint the floor, and move forward. It's just been really too cold to do anything. However, we wanted to put out a schoolie related video for you guys. As I drive bus for a living, I'm required to do a pre-inspection of the vehicle every single time I take it out. So we wanted to make this quick video to give you some tips and tricks and what to look for, whether you're um, purchasing a schoolie for the first time or you're traveling on the road and you want to do this inspection every single day. As you approach the bus, you're going to want to take a quick look underneath to make sure there isn't any sort of puddles or fluids on the ground. As you can see, we do have an oil leak. That's something that we have to address. Let's pop open the hood. So now that we're here on the driver's side of the engine bay, one of the first things I'm gonna look at here is the steering shaft column. You're gonna to wanna to actually grab it and wiggle it back and forth. You're gonna be checking for play in the steering knuckles themselves. You can also look up at the steering wheel inside the cab and see if there's any play between you turning it. So let's say you turn it you know, a quarter turn and it only turns you know, one eighth at the actual steering wheel. You'll know that there's some play in your system. The other components you're gonna look at in the steering system are basically anything related and connected to it. Um, a lot of them have a cotter style pin, which means there's a nut that goes in and there's a hole through the bolt. You slide the pin into it and then it bends around. That prevents the nut from actually becoming loose. So you wanna make sure that if there is supposed to be a pin in there, there is a pin in there so it doesn't actually come loose. The other thing you're gonna look at is the rod that runs from the end. So that would be your tie rod end as it goes all the way across to the other side, which connects your two wheels together. If there's any pins associated with that, you want to make sure that they're in there as well. The other thing with these joints is you want to make sure that they're not dried out. It's normal to see a little bit of grease come out of them and it to be a little bit um, oily around it, I guess. But what you don't want to see is a cracked, any sort of cracked gasket and it being very dry. That's going to cause a lot of grinding and you'll hear a lot of noises while you're trying to steer. The other thing you're going to look at when you're down here is the leaf spring, which is this long bar that runs down here. The most important thing to look for in a leaf spring is to see if there's any cracks in it. It'll be pretty obvious if it's broken. Um, the general rule of thumb is you make sure the leaf spring is smiling, which means it has a smile shape to it. If it's, if it's frowning or it's bowed the wrong way, then that's obviously a sign of a problem. Right behind the steer tire here, you're gonna look at the braking system. In this case, this is a hydraulic braking system. So you're gonna check to make sure that there is no fluids that are coming out of it. The other thing that I wanted to mention for the older school buses, this is a 1997, it has a throttle return spring. And what that does is it basically pops the gas pedal back up when you release it. What you want to check for is there's two bolts that the spring wraps around. And you don't want those to be tight to those bolts. In other words, there's no playroom in it. So you want to grab the spring and move it up and down and make sure that it can move freely up and down, obviously not sliding off the bolt. But if it's too tight on the bolt, it will bend back and forth and create metal fatigue, and that will cause it to snap. And when you're going up the Rocky Mountains, it worked great going up the mountain, but then going back down at full throttle didn't work so well. The next thing you're gonna check on this side is all of your fluids. I wanted to quickly touch about the uh, transmission fluid. In this particular vehicle, we don't actually have a transmission dipstick. The important thing to know, if you do have a transmission dipstick, is that you should only be checking it after the, um, I should say the engine, after the bus has been driving for a while. So if you do this check in the morning, you can skip doing that part, but a little later down the road during the day, you would actually want to pull up that dipstick when it's warm. All the other fluids should be checked cold. The first thing you're going to check is the oil dipstick. You're going to want to pull the dipstick all the way out. You're going to want to wipe the dipstick off on a rag. You want to make sure you insert it in all the way and make sure it clips down in its seated position. Then pull it all the way out and check the level and there's usually a fill line or an area that it should be full between. Then there's the power steering reservoirs. In, in, in this case, we have reservoirs. We have two of them. You're gonna wanna take the, uh, the lid off of them and there's usually a little piece of metal that's attached to the lid and it sticks down. And you basically use that. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull it up, wipe it off. You're gonna screw it in all the way and then unscrew it, check the level again. They flow downwards. So you might find one has more fluid in it, one doesn't. Once again, you wanna make sure all these are checked cold because once you're running them, they're gonna be pumping around and moving out of the system. You want a cold level. 
Same goes for the braking system. In this case, once again, we have a hydraulic braking system. Once you turn the vehicle on, it's gonna pump the brake fluid into the systems and compress it. So in other words, your brake fluid levels are actually gonna drop. So you wanna check this cold. Once again, you take off the top cap. It is very important that you clean the outside of the cap before you take it off because you don't want any dirt getting in your braking system. That can cause a lot of problems. In this case, some of them will be a clear um, the, the case itself will be clear and you'll be able to tell the level. Uh, in this one you can't, but when you open the top you'll be able to see inside and it even says right on the top that you fill it up to a certain line. Another very important thing is to check your coolant level. Once again this has to be cold because actually the coolant expands uh, when it gets hot. So it may look like you have lots of fluid while you're running it, but then when you stop it overnight the fluid levels will go back down. On the side of it here there is an add line and there's a full line so you want your coolant to be somewhere between those lines when it's cold first thing in the morning in our situation we've actually removed our heaters and drained a lot of the coolant so our reservoir is actually empty so we're gonna have to fill that once we get it hooked back up the other thing you want to look at is your radiator fan which is right in front of your engine and right behind your radiator and what you want to do is grab it and spin it all the way around and have a look at the blades and make sure that there is no uh, any physical damage, scratches, or chunks missing out of it. Now on the passenger side, the one thing you're going to check over here is you're going to check the belts. And the way you're going to check the belts is by visually looking at them, seeing if they're like cracked or frayed or there's any parts coming off of them. The other thing you're going to do is actually push on them and see how tight they are. If they're incredibly tight, there should be a little bit of play in them. If they're incredibly tight and they could be too tight, and if they're flopping around and you can kind of move them around, then they're way too loose. The other thing you're going to want to check is your air filter. In this case, it's this box up here. Um, this one's actually held on by a nut. You have to take the nut off. So this one's not necessarily as easy to check. Some of them actually have a gauge where it has like a green and a red zone and it tells you how dirty your filter is. So that might be not something you have to check every single day, but at least check once in a while. On this side, you're gonna do the same thing in regards to the suspension as you would on the driver's side. So you're gonna check the leaf spring to make sure it's smiling, check to make sure all your cotter pins are in. You're gonna check the back of your braking system. In this case, hydraulic, make sure that there is no fluid coming out of it. The other thing you're gonna do, I forgot to mention the other side, is check your shocks. The only thing that you're gonna really pay attention to them is whether or not they're leaking oil. On this side, there's the hydraulic brake line that comes out and comes back and through. Some of them are really hard to see, but give a quick glance at the brake line too to make sure that all the fittings are properly connected. It usually transfers from a hard line to a flex line for the front wheel as it moves around, obviously. There's only one fluid to check on this side of the bus, and that is your windshield wiper fluid. That one's pretty obvious to check because it's clear and you can see right into it, and windshield fluid is usually a bright multicolored sort of fluid, so easy to check that. So that covers the um, inspection of the engine bay itself. Uh, once again, like we mentioned before, you wanna look for anything that's out of the normal. So not necessarily all these parts that I just pointed at. You might see other leaks, you might see oil leaks out of the engine, uh, coolant leaks out of the system, etc., etc. So anything that's out of the normal is what you're trying to look for. And uh, if you're unsure about anything, I would take it to a mechanic. Now, before you close up the hood and latch it shut, we're gonna check the steer tires and that's the best time to do it with the hood off. Now let's talk about tires. These are your front tires, also known as the steer tires of the bus. What you're gonna look for, it's called the, uh, you're looking for the ABCs, which is abrasions, bulges, or cracks in the tire. You're gonna wanna look at the surface of the tire. You're gonna wanna look at the tread of the tire to check for any bolts or anything sticking out of it. You're gonna look for any cracks, scratches, gouges, anything of that nature that's out of the ordinary. The reason we mentioned leave the hood open is because you want to get and look behind the steer tire. It's easier to do with the hood open. The other very important thing to look at is the actual lug nuts themselves. You're going to want to physically grab them and turn them to the left so you counterclockwise to see if they turn at all. These should be put on with a lot of force and you should not be able to turn them at all. If there is any wiggle in these lug nuts themselves, do not drive your vehicle, get them retorqued. These things here are called wheel checks. And the way they work is that when you bring your bus to a shop and they retorque your wheels, they will take these off and slide them on to point to the next lug nut in line. There should be one on every single lug nut. They cheaped out here and apparently we only got one. 
And this way you can check at a visual glance just by approaching your vehicle, you can tell if any of these have changed or come out of torque. Another thing to look at is the, uh, the hub here as well. You wanna make sure that there's no fluid actually coming out of it. If it is coming out, it usually sprays around the wheel. So that's something to look for. Another thing is to check your uh, tire valve stem. So that's where you would put in uh, air pressure into your tire. Make sure that cap is actually on or else if you just touch it, give it a simple touch, it starts releasing air. So make sure those are on. Another thing to note is that commercial tires don't look flat if they run out of air. In other words, they're gonna stay their same shape and form. The only real way to check a commercial tire is obviously by taking off the valve stem, either using a tire pressure checker or hooking it up to an air compressor. However, for a daily circle check, what you can do is use a heavy sort of object. Obviously, it can't damage the tire whatsoever. You're gonna to wanna to strike the surface of the tire. You can even use your fist if you want. It's a little hard to do on the back ones. And what you're listening for is a very hollow thud. You'll hear almost like an echo sound in it. You might not know what that is right away, but if you do all six of your tires in the same way, you will notice a difference if one of them is a great deal lower than the other. You're gonna to wanna to repeat this process on your rear wheels as well. It's a little bit harder to check the inner dually because there's a second tire back here. So it's a little bit harder to visually check it, um, but you're gonna do your best sometimes if you use a flashlight and look in the wheel well, as you can see it from the side. The other thing you can do, if it's light enough, is you can see the other side, the inner dually, from the opposite side of the bus. So you would check this side from that side and the other side from this side. With the rear dualies, your valve stem, one's gonna be on the front here. The other one, in this case, is gonna be way back here. So you're gonna to wanna to check that one as well. One other note that I want to mention about this specific wheel is that these are referred to as Dayton wheels and essentially what makes them different is that they have these clips and the rim itself is a big circle and it slides in and then these clips themselves actually hold the rim in place so you want to make sure that all of these look in fairly good condition you don't want any big chunks or if they're super rusted out or they look different from the one next to it that would be a good indicator. Another thing to check would be the braking system. And I find it's easier to do that from the back of the bus looking underneath. You can actually see right behind and you wanna make sure, in this case, hydraulic, you don't wanna see any fluid coming out of it. Now for the fuel tank. In this case, it's located on the side of the bus down here. Some of them are located on the back, sort of behind the back tires in the middle. You're gonna to wanna to look for any fuel that's leaking out of the tank itself. You wanna also have a quick look at the condition of the tank and see if that any of these rails or any of the brackets that are holding it up are super rusted out or it's sagging in any which way. When you're walking down the middle of the bus, you're gonna to wanna to look right underneath and you're gonna be looking at the actual drive shaft, which runs from your transmission all the way back to your rear differential. If your transmission, for whatever way, one of the bearings is to come loose and fall down, there are these protective hoops that run down and they basically prevent the, the drive shaft from hitting the ground and getting stuck in the ground and actually catapulting your bus upwards. That is a worst case scenario. Those are to prevent that from happening. Therefore, if your drive shaft breaks, it'll just fall and hit on top of them. So you wanna make sure that none of them are missing or they look loose or anything like that. You're not actually gonna crawl underneath and grab them for a daily inspection, but you wanna make sure that they're still there. At the back of the bus here, don't mind the blue tarp, we got some leaks, so we have it wrapped up at the moment. But if you look right underneath, you can see the back of your rear wheels, you can see your differential. You're gonna wanna, again, check for any fluid leaking. You can see that there is uh, the two struts in there, as well as the leaf springs. So you're gonna check those just like you would the front ones. You can also check the rear of the braking system to make sure that there isn't any hydraulic fluid leaks. As well, you can see the back of the tires and a, kind of a better shot of the inner dualies as well. One other thing is to check any of these body panels. Uh, in this case, we actually have this one screwed shut um, because the latch did break on it. Um, but you wanna make sure that all of your panels, so this is a battery panel, there may be other panels as well as storage compartments. You're gonna wanna make sure those are all closed as well. So now we're gonna move into the interior cab of the bus itself. Uh, unfortunately, we have our heater system disconnected and I can't start it or run any of the systems, but I'll show you what you're looking for. You wanna check the interior switches on your bus. So you want to check your windshield wipers, make sure your fluid sprays right. If you have interior dome lights, you want to turn those on. As well as you want to check all of your heater fans or anything that's hooked up, make sure all your defrost is working. So then you're actually going to want to turn your bus on and make sure everything runs properly. You've got no warning lights or anything obvious on the dash, all your gauges work. 
Now with your engine running, you're going to want to check all of your lights. So you want to check your brake lights, your turn signals, your marker lights, reverse lights, headlights, high beams, etc. This part really helps if you have someone else that can walk to the back of the bus while you cycle through it to make sure that everything's working as you can't really see it when you're up here. The final step that I do before I hit the road is to actually perform a brake test. If you have air brakes, this is a little bit different, but for a hydraulic braking system, all you're going to want to do is put the vehicle in drive, go forward a little bit, and then slam on the brakes and make sure that everything stops the way it should. You then put it in reverse, hit the reverse, do the same thing with the brakes, you honk your horn, make sure your horn works, and away you go. That concludes the basic uh, pre-trip inspection. Uh, here are some extra things though, if you're actually looking at purchasing a school bus and you want some more information about the bus and uh, some more details about it. A tire may have great tread, but the tire itself might be really old. And these types of tires, and on RVs too, they like to dry rot. And it's usually recommended that about every 10 years they get replaced, regardless of the actual tread depth. If you're looking for the information on how old the tires are on your bus, you can check the uh, the dot tag here. And the dot tag will have, you wanna look for these last four codes. The first two numbers are gonna be the week in which it was made, and the last two is gonna be the year. So in this case, it does say 2014. It is actually 2014, but it's the 20th week of 2014. That's when these tires were made. Another thing to look for is this cable and spring that holds the hood from falling forward on top of you. So you wanna make sure that spring is in good shape as well as the cable. And there's one more on the other side as well. Another thing you're looking for is this certificate of approval. This is when the vehicle was basically last safety six months ago and then June is when it expires, June of 2017. This lets you know when the vehicle was last safety and was last approved for use on the road. Another thing to look for is any sort of plaque or identification number in any of the parts. In this case, this is the plaque for the turbo. And in our situation, we found one on the transmission, we found one on the differential, one on the engine, one on the power steering pump, and I do believe there was one or two more. There's also these stickers all around the vehicle. This one's in the engine bay. There's several up, up by the uh, driver's seat as well. And that gives you the VIN number as well as information on tire size, your tire pressure, your weight ratings and all that stuff. Very important to know. It's also a wiring diagram back here. That could be helpful. Another obvious thing to look for would be any forms of rust. Uh, you usually find it behind any of the wheels, so in this case behind the front wheel and then back on the rear wheel would be up and around the back panel. That's usually where salt, dirt and stuff gets flung and it rusts it out. Checking to make sure that all of your um, interior windows actually open and close properly. Uh, checking your emergency exits, checking your back door, making sure everything functions as it should. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with anybody that you think could use the help. And uh, feel free to subscribe and watch some more of our videos over here. You can check out our bus conversion and uh, hopefully we'll be right back at this very soon.